Welcome back and drop an elbow on that subscribe and like button to help me out. And we will kick off the worst fantasy show. This is the worst. <laughs> Welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with literally the least right now, Jack Lucene. I am doing a pre-record today because I literally just don't have it in me, guys, uh, to do a back-to-back -back live. So I thought it would be fun just to do a quick fast puppy draft on underdog. And without any further ado, we shall get right into it. Waiting for three people, two people. This is going to fill up quick one person. The draft is already right around the corner. Uh, Scott Fishbowl is wrapping up for some divisions. I know there are definitely drafts out there where it's going slower. And my apologies to you. But my draft for Scott Fishbowl is wrapped up in the Joker division. So maybe at some point uh, I'll make a little video about that. But I'll be talking about it a lot. In the coming weeks, as will everybody else who managed to get into the tournament. Shout out to Scott Fish, Scott Fishbowl. And again, if you've made it into the tournament, uh, make sure that you make a donation to fantasycares.org. Uh, we don't really do sponsors on this show, but obviously that's a charity. That's the main charity for Scott Fishbowl. It is free. But yes, it would be nice if you are able to, to please make a donation. All the money goes to uh, basically like doing awesome things for kids, like getting them gifts around the holidays and stuff. And we are already in the draft room. This is going to kick off quickly. And we are at the 105, which is perfect. I can already tell you we're getting Bijan Robinson, barring any crazy snipage here. Uh, I am very comfortable with how deep wide receiver is this year going running back early. The drop off at the running back position is much more significant than at the wide receiver position. So Bijan Robinson is my favorite running back target this year uh, in all formats outside of uh, Christian McCaffrey, and you could argue in Dynasty, uh, you could even rank him ahead of Christian McCaffrey. If you were doing that last year, you should definitely be doing it this year. But I love Bijan as my first overall pick. I love him in the first round. Uh, and it's very heavy wide receiver normally, you can see. So just looking at the board. Uh, oh, let's actually flip to the board view here. So Christian McCaffrey, C.D. Lamb, Tyreek Hill. I'm gonna, I need to get the whole board here. I just got to make my screen smaller. There we go. We can still see per... Uh, there. We can see now. That looks good. All right, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut one off a little bit, but we can see the name. So, yes, a uh, very heavy wide receiver, as you can see. Christian McCaffrey, Bijan Robinson, and Brees Hall are the only running backs that have gone in the first round. And then Jameer Gibbs comes off the board in the early second. But when you are at this position at 11, especially, look at, would you rather have Garrett Wilson and Nico Collins that early? Or would you have rather had Jameer Gibbs and Jonathan Taylor? Because you could have definitely done that. Or Jameer Gibbs and Saquon or Jonathan Taylor. Whichever of those three you prefer. And then come back at your wide receivers later. And this is going to be going fast. Uh, we are already back on the board here. I'm going to take Saquon. I love going running back, running back. Again, I'm very comfortable waiting on the wide receivers because it's just so deep this year. I could have gone with Kyron Williams there also. Uh, I would have been satisfied with that, but Saquon still being on the board. <clears throat> and I see him having top five potential with Philadelphia. I think people are underrating that acquisition. Saquon Barkley, coming out of college, uh, if you guys remember too, he was touted as like having 
quarterback traits, like, uh, you know, in terms of leadership and in terms of team chemistry and the way that he affects the players around him. So, you know, Saquon, I think, is even being underrated, uh, I would argue. There. Now you can see the whole board, the whole thing. My stupid head was covering half the players uh, available, but yeah, um, I'm I'm totally happy with. Oof. You know what? Let's just keep punting wide receiver. We're just gonna go super high T and get a third running back in Derrick Henry because I think Derrick Henry is a smash for. He's going to compete for the touchdown lead this year with the Ravens. That's almost locked stock to smoking barrel. Even though the Ravens make me a little bit nervous because they have lost uh, three-fifths of their offensive line. They did lose a big chunk of the offensive line, but it's it's a team factor. You're really betting on the Ravens uh, to just figure it out. And I mean... It was between Derrick Henry and Devon A. Shane there. Uh, the only wide receivers I was looking at was Pittman and DJ Moore, uh, really. Um, because, like, I would rather have Derrick Henry over Zay Flowers for sure. I know people are very enamored with Tank Dell. That one scares me a little bit. Um, but, yeah, now with three stud running backs like that, we are basically done with running backs now because yeah, I'll pepper in a couple guys very late in this draft so that we still have like five, six running backs total. But at this point we're closing out running back. We can even just take them completely off our board and we can now focus on the rest of this team. Um, so obviously having gone running back early, that's going to change my decisions a little bit in the sense of I'm definitely punting quarterback, no matter what. We're going to attack wide receiver as it comes back around now, and we'll see what kind of wide receivers we're able to get. I'm looking at kind of guys that I feel could be on the more consistent side, but are being overlooked. So that means Amari Cooper, Christian Kirk, Terry McLaurin are kind of my three targets right now that I'm hoping make it to me. And what's great is these guys have gone heavy wide receiver. There is a chance that, you know, 40 ounce and GWB here want running backs or one of these onesie positions. Well, maybe we're going to just keep, you know what? We're going to be very brave with wide receiver. We're going to just keep punting wide receiver and see what happens because of just how deep that position is compared to how the tight end position dries up and the running back dries up. So now we have our running backs. We have our onesie. I know Kyler Murray will be there a little bit later, potentially for the hookup uh, for the stack. So I kind of like how this team is rounding into shape already. And again, there's so many wide receivers, especially when you talk about the incoming rookies and how effective I believe they could be. And I'm looking at, it's kind of gross as your wide receiver one, for sure. I get it. But Calvin Ridley, Chris Godwin are my two targets coming around the bend here. Especially Chris Godwin, I feel like, is definitely going to have a bounce back season. Like, I could see Mike Evans regressing a little bit and where Mike Evans regresses a little bit i could see chris godwin picking up that slack and i think with the way that we've built this team we want a little bit more consistency and so i'm actually going to take chris godwin here because i i like calvin ridley in tennessee i do believe that's more of spike week potential there's going to be weeks where he leaves you out out in the cold out in the dry but again you look at the way the wide receiver rooms or the wide receivers stack out like Calvin Ridley still on the board. Xavier Worthy still on the board. Rashi Rice still on the board. DeAndre Hopkins, Lad McConkie, who I love. Christian Watson, Deontay Johnson, Brian Thomas, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Oh, baby. And there's Kyler Murray. I don't know if I'm going to end up grabbing Kyler. That's, he's getting pushed up a little bit, maybe because of the stack. 
But again, the wide receiver position, like Tyler Lockett is still a viable starter down here by the time we get to, you know, and the running backs, just to put the running backs back on the board and in perspective, it's like down by the time we get to Tyler Lockett, your Tony Pollard is nice, but Brian Robinson questions, Ty J Spears splitting the backfield. Trey Benson is a rookie splitting with James Conner, Devin Singletary. Yeah, Javante Williams. Yeah. Like, those are value running backs. Those are not the type of guys that, you know, outright win you leagues. So it just, I guess it depends kind of how you value the positions. I know traditionally uh, most players will go very wide receiver heavy in best ball drafts, but we're, we're changing it up. So I'm going to grab my guy, Lab McConkie here. I'm, I'm so in on Lab McConkie. It is kind of ridiculous. I'm probably, I had a whole debate with a uh, shout out to Hoove tube. Uh, we had a whole debate basically about who is going to have the better fantasy finish between Lad McConkie and Jackson Smith and Jigba. And I am very extremely on the side of Lad McConkie. To me, it's not even close. And it's for a couple of reasons. One, yes, I believe in the talent of Lad McConkie. I understand that he didn't produce uh, at like elite levels in college. He wasn't asked to. Uh, some college programs just aren't asking you to do that. He passes the eye test for me in every single conceivable way uh, in terms of how he attacks his routes, how he attacks the ball at the point of uh, reception. Everything about this guy physically from every time I see him on tape, and uh, granted, yes, some of it is uh, just like in shorts and his footwork, but man, he he is a guy that I think could be very special. So we are going to take Kyler here, actually, with the for the stack. Stack. See, I love Kyler in the seventh, too. That's just really good value. And between him and, like, Keon Coleman and Cortland Sutton, uh, like, you know, I know we only have two wide receivers, but, again, this is where we're going to start picking up some value. You know, Tyler Lockett, Joshua Palmer, Rashid Shahid. I like all of those guys as my wide receiver three, because they can all pop decent weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. I also really like Jake Ferguson here, if we had waited on tight end. Uh, Jake Ferguson and Evan Ingram were both on the board. Those would One of those guys would have been my pick had we waited on tight end. I will say normally when I go like the crazy running back early, I do end up waiting on quarterback tight end, but this is we're we're trying it. We're really pushing my theory to the test of pushing the wide receivers down to really build out the rest of our team. Because now you look at Kyler Murray and Trey McBride, and then that running back room, that looks very sexy. And then, yeah, wide receiver definitely needs some help. We have Chris Godwin and Ladd McConkie, and that's it. So... It'll be interesting to see how this team fully comes together. But this is uh, why I like uh, some of these lower yield, uh, sorry, lower entry drafts, like the in terms of the dollar amount, like the five dollar entries um, and the fast, the fast puppies. I like to mix it up a little bit. You know, hitting the all wide receivers early. It's just very traditional, and this is our way of pivoting. So see, um, you know what? We're going to go with the old tried and true of Tyler Lockett. Just make sure we get some wide receiver weeks producing. And if for some reason, like, you know, Tyler Lockett got traded midseason, you never know where he ends up. We're going to start loading up. Like, I really like Rashid Shahid here. Uh, I would take Joshua Palmer, but we already have Lad McConkie. I don't know if I really want both of them. Brandon Cooks, old. Again, some guys who are kind of old, tried, and true. And then maybe mix them up with some potential guys like a Dontavian Wicks, 
who could have a, a breakout season. And we're definitely waiting on, I like obviously, quarterback and tight end too. Uh, I'm fine waiting a while. So this is where I feel like, too, a lot of the meat of the wide receivers uh, that I like kind of end up falling. Ooh, we got sniped right there on Shahid. I'm going to reach a little bit. I'm going to actually take Dontavian Wicks. I want, I want that potential. As much as I like Romeo Dobbs, he is very much kind of just um, the the wire. He reminds me of um, oh my god, why am I blanking on his name? I can see his face in my mind. Uh, <laughs> nah, eh, I'm totally blanking on the name. But there was a. Uh, J, J, I want to say James Woods. That's a fucking actor. That's not even remotely close. I don't even know. I don't even know. No. Um, old ass Green Bay wide receiver that was like super mid for like his entire career, even though he had uh, Aaron Rodgers. Hold on. I know exactly how I'm going to look it up. 2013 Green Bay Packers roster. Boom. This is beautiful podcasting right now when you're having to look up information on the fly. Give me the starters. James Jones. God damn. There it is. James Jones. Good old James Jones. That's like, uh, it's like that fucking joke of like uh, a girl's bitch about how guys can just sit around and throw out old wide receiver names or old running back names and just reminisce like oh james jones whoa wayne crabat wayne crabat uh all right let's uh we haven't really looked at the board much to see what everybody else is doing we've kind of just been focused on ourselves i apologize um let's kind of see who else i like i like i mean for a traditional build 12 g money uh, Marvin Harrison, Drake London, Stephon Diggs, George Pickens. That's a great start. Came back with his running backs, James Cook. I'm in love with James Cook this year. Josh Jacobs, Aaron Jones. He waited a long time, and Jake Ferguson and Jaden Daniels are his uh, tight end and quarterback. I kind of love that. You know, Jaden Daniels with that rushing upside, he has the ability to break fantasy if he hits. And I love Jake Ferguson this year. I have him as a top five tight end. So shout out to you, G Money, wherever you are. I really like your team. All right. Uh, yeah, you know what? I was going to take Brandon Cook there, but I'm actually going to take Jacoby Myers. I kind of like that. And we're getting into the range of where I usually like to take my second quarterback also because I usually – I want one of Tua, Goff, or Herbert to kind of stabilize the room and so that I don't have to take anybody else, basically. I can just take two quarterbacks because I'm very comfortable with both of those. I oh, Blake Corum's still there on the board, though. Ooh, I am very in love with Blake Corum this year because obviously it's just like if anything were to happen to Kyron Williams, that is, to me, an automatic league winner. We saw it last year with Kyron Williams. And Blake Corum, like, look, I, hey, I, I drafted Kyron Williams in Dynasty before it was cool. I was in on Kyron Williams because coming out of Notre Dame, he was a character guy. He was the kind of guy that, like, gets in the building early, works his ass off. But Blake Corum is just more talented. Yeah, we're going to take... Already making a good impression. Yeah, we're going to take Blake Orm here. We're going to wrap up the running back room a little bit. Because uh, uh, I pretty much won't even touch running back. Uh, so we're not getting our second quarterback, though. That's what that means. Because there's no way by the time we're 13 picks away now, Goff and Herbert will be gone. So that's fine. I mean, I might just completely punt it. All the way to the end, we can get Baker Mayfield or even I super love Bryce Young for a bounce back. Like all they did for Bryce Young was add 
another number one wide receiver, arguably the best rookie running back in the draft once he's healthy and Jonathan Brooks. Uh, and underrated, they added Jatavian Sanders, the tight end. He is kind of reminds me of Ben Watson. He's actually a pretty good receiving option. He, to me, was my second rated rookie tight end coming out of the draft right behind Brock Bowers and ahead of Ben Sanat. Only because as much as I love Sanat, Sanat's more of a hybrid of like a tight end uh, fullback. So it's weird. It's going to be weird and interesting to see how they end up using Ben Sanat in that offense. Um, it could end up being where he ends up producing more. It could also end up being where he produces less. Jatavian Sanders is definitely more of a natural, uh, you know, receiving threat. Man, yo, G Money. Got Justin Herbert, by the way, to match with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I love his team. It, it's As far as just going traditional wide receiver and the way he's been able to attack this draft, uh, he got James Cook, who's one of my favorite running backs. He got Jake Ferguson, one of my favorite tight ends. And he got Justin Herbert, uh, who I love at quarterback. So I got to give a huge shout out to G-Money because I'm really loving his team build. Oh, man, you know what? Pat Fryermuth just sitting right there for me. Let's just finish our tight end room. Because uh, Fryermuth, I feel like there's a bit of a cliff after him. Because Cole Komet, I know people still like Cole Komet, but that scares the hell out of me when you have DJ Moore and Roma Dunes and Keenan Allen. Hawkinson coming off the injury and... The injury was very late in the season. I think people forget that already. I don't know if he's going to even be ready at the beginning of the season. Plus, he's going to have either Sam Darnold or a rookie quarterback. Luke Musgrave, and, you know, uh, I like Luke Musgrave, but he also scares me because even, even though, yes, he got injured and then Tucker Craft took over, Tucker Craft in the fewer games I felt like produced more than Musgrave. And it, you know, it kind of is reminiscent of their draft comp was Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews, where Musgrave was compared to um to Hayden Hurst. And it was Tucker Craft who got the comp to uh Freaking, uh, we're gonna take a look at here for some upside. Uh, sorry, Tucker Craft was the one that got compared to Mark Andrews, so that one just scares scares me a little bit. Oh, let's see, Wandell Robinson. I like, so we're gonna just start adding some guys. In, oh, Roman Wilson. See, this is what I'm saying, like, Roman Wilson. As this late of a pick, that is lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. That is all day, every day. Steelers wide receiver, guys. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I love Tyrone Tracy as a late option. Javon Baker. Javon Baker kind of reminds me of, uh, again, that this. I know it's like being reported as, but some guys just have that dog mentality of like Amon Ross St. Brown, the way he's able to remember like every wide receiver that was drafted ahead of him. That kind of thing drives you in the NFL. I think Javon Baker could potentially be a guy. I really like getting him late for sure. Faux show. Um, we're pretty much, I'm not going to take any more tight ends because I'm good on tight end. You know what is one thing we could do that would be kind of sneaky? I don't know if it always works, though. If we took Russ and Fields somehow as our second quarterback. It usually doesn't work, though. I'm not going to lie. Jatavian Sanders. I don't know why I like Jatavian Sanders so much. I just do. If we were going to take a third tight end, but probably will not take a third tight end. We're going to get Tyler Boyd in that queue. We're really looking for guys at this point, um, a mix of, you know, rookies with upside and veterans that I feel like can just have a couple spike games for us because it's really all we need. Man, Roman Wilson, that's 
Bowman Wilson might be my most drafted rookie in best ball just because he goes so late. In the 14th round to get potentially the second wide receiver for the Steelers. Like Roman Wilson could potentially have like a, a Tyler Lockett style um, 807, you know, and to get that in the 14th round of a best ball draft is just insanity. And again, it's like we have seven wide receivers. They might not be uh, everyone's favorites, but these are all the type of guys that can just all go off on random weeks. And we just need, you know, three of them every week. And because of the way we were able to build, we only have the two tight ends. We're going to stick with the two tight ends, I think. That's for sure. Because we need to just have as many wide receivers as possible. But we have a, a decent mix of veterans and rookies, which I love. But yeah, oh, that's... Man, I love that running back room. That just looks so sick. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Well, Baker Mayfield went there, so we'll take Bryce Young. We're just going to take Bryce Young as the second quarterback. That way I don't have to fuck around with the Russell Wilson, Justin Fields bullshit. And we're literally just going to have two quarterback, two tight end. And the rest of this is going to be all wide receiver most likely unless Tracy makes it to me which he might I love me some Tyrone Tracy this year I would take him as my last running back I'd be fine with that uh, the only other consideration for running back really is Rasheen Ali if we want to take oh, what the hell was that oh Bo Melton well we can keep Bo Melton in the queue uh, oh, KJ Osborne in the queue, Malik Washington in the queue. Okay, where the hell did he just disappear? To? Rasheen Ali, there you are. Boom. That potentially could be our very last pick. Just to pair with uh, Derrick Henry, who is a little bit of an older running back. If for any reason Derrick Henry were to go down, we'd have the handcuff on the team in Rasheen Ali. I feel like we get the majority of those opportunities. Justice Hill has been there for like fucking six years and he's never really been like a guy. So, but we have two, we have three picks left basically. And I am so in love with G Money's team here. Just the way he's been able to pepper some tight ends at the end. Hunter Henry and Ben Sanat. I love both of those guys, and they pair well with Jake Ferguson. You got Kirk Cousins, Bucky Irving. I don't mind that. Yeah, I really like G Money's team. Shout out to G Money. I'm sorry that you died at the end of Hardball. We're almost back on the clock already. Jesus, I love these 20 second clocks. These ones just you pound right through them. Come on, Tracy. Come on down. You're the next contestant on. I'm drafting you. Tyrone Tracy is one of my absolute favorite deep sleepers this year. As far as the rookie running backs, just because also like he used to be uh a wide receiver converted and that's why it took him longer to kind of go through the college system. But just the fact of, you know, you look at the opportunity that he has in New York, it's like him, Eric Gray and Devin Singletary. I think between those three running backs, he has the best wide receiving skills and he could carve out a role for himself just doing that basically. And we're going to, Instead of just directly handcuffing Derrick Henry, I prefer to take a little bit more upside in a guy that I think could maybe find himself his own role in the offense. I love Malik Washington's upside here, but I'm probably going to take KJ Osborne. He's just being projected right now as like the number one guy in New England. It's kind of gross. I feel like he's going to lose that job, though. You know what? No, we're going to take 
Tyler Boyd. Yeah? No. You know what? Screw it. Malik Washington. Let's get risky business at the end. Malik Washington, I feel like, out of all these guys, it's like they're all, you know, probably not going to produce anything. But if one of them could hit, I know that um, Mike McDaniels, the coach for the Dolphins, was enamored with Malik Washington. I know Malik Washington fits well into that system. I know that he is a burner. And I know that if anything happens to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddell, he could step into a larger role and have some spike weeks. And again, just the Dolphins offense and the way they operate, I think he could have, you know, he could easily have a game where he goes one for 80 and a touch. Uh, and that'll make, that makes it into my lineup that week. So that's going to be the pick. And I actually think I might still take Rasheen Ali actually with my last pick just to kind of really lock up that Ravens running back room as far as I'm concerned. But just Derek, I don't feel like Derek Henry is really going to be like hurt at any point. Not hurt to the point of like, eh, but it's running back. You just never know. You just never know. Uh, let's just go see if there's anybody else I want to. I do like Mia's dad. Shout out to you. Uh, Malik Neighbor is kind of early, but he should just get pure volume. And Mahomes and Komet. Nah. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, nine. What is this? Nine pound hammer. I like your build. Tyreek, Brandon Ayuk, Devontae Adams, Travis Etienne. Nice. Nice. Keenan, Rashad, Jackson. Smith and Jigba, Raheem Mostert. I like that. David and Joku. Paired quarterbacks, Purdy and Tua. That's nice. <laughs> Just completely punted tight end, though. Took Noah Fan and Isaiah Likely. That's funny. No, I really like. Uh, obviously, I always love my own build the best, but I really liked uh, what G Money did. I'm going to wrap this build up with Rasheen Ali. Rasheen Ali. So I love, 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 love how this draft turned out. Uh, the, the projections never love how my drafts turn out, I feel like, though. I I will say I end up taking a lot of, a lot more rookies maybe than I should. But, you know, I think we all get that rookie fever in us. But I feel like I mixed it up well with the veterans. So... You know, those projections will change over time anyways. Like, again, if Blake, God forbid anything happens to Kyron Williams, Blake Corum, that's a league winner. Uh, he should be drafted in, like, every, especially if I am drafting Kyron Williams. Like, I'm trying so hard to get Blake Corum. Uh, it, the only place where it's hard to do that really is dynasty leagues. But in redraft, like, if I draft Kyron Williams even if I have to do it around early, like, and when I say around early, I mean like if he's projected to go in the twelfth, and I have to take him in the eleventh, Blake Horm will be on my team. You bet your bottom dollar. You bet your bippy. All right, uh, I'm tired. That's the whole reason I'm doing this pre-record. So we're gonna cut this short and early and sweet. Thank you guys so much for following along super kick that subscribe and like button help support the show. Uh, I will hopefully be back live next week. Um, I shouldn't have to do pre-records again until I am leaving for Canton, Ohio. Uh, obviously that week, which will be August 10th and 11th. Um, all of my shows will go up pre-recorded that week. Uh, cause I'll be on vacation. Uh, but yeah, I just needed, <laughs> Need a little bit of a break uh, tonight, um, also because I do have uh, the worst interview. I have a show scheduled tonight uh, to pre-record, so I didn't want to have to do them back-to-back. -back. So that was another reason, just scheduling-wise and mental health-wise and everything. It just made more sense, and uh, at the end of the day, for me, it's a hobby. So, you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky that you guys are here, but I'm also lucky that I get to 
uh, set the schedule as I need it. But yeah, I super appreciate you guys for following along. I hope you enjoyed this short little draft. Uh, the fast puppy, still lots of room in there. So make sure you go run, run, run uh, to underdog. Not a sponsor, not affiliated whatsoever. Uh, shout out to you guys, and I will catch all of you on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare-chested. Somebody stop Look that out. man. Here comes